First of all, to understand God, we have to approach uh, revealed scriptures wherein we can learn the science of God. Just like if one wants to study uh, medicine, one must study medical books under a professor. So to understand God, we must also approach uh, revealed scriptures under the direction of a spiritual master. In the Bhagavad Gita, which is one of the most important of all Vedic literatures, it is stated, Tadvidi paripatena pariprashana sevaya upidekshanti teginam gyaninas tadvadarshanaha. Just try to learn the truth or under, understand the truth by approaching a bona fide spiritual master. <clears throat> Inquire from him submissively and render service to him. The self realized soul can give you knowledge because he has seen the truth. I 
of the Krishna conscious movement to give people knowledge how they can solve the practical problems of material life because actually the problem is really a spiritual problem that we have forgotten Krishna or we have forgotten God all problems actually manifest from that be they political problems social problems personal problems etc and the Krishna conscious movement by giving the knowledge that is there in the Vedic scriptures there in the Bhagavad Gita can solve these uh, these problems. We can just give an example, something that's very much on the minds of the people of the world right now is the environment. Many people throughout the world are very disturbed that man is destroying the environment around him and that in the future our children or their grandchildren or their children may not have you know, a world to live in that is very decent. You can breathe fresh air and drink fresh water. So why is this problem there, that the environment is being uh, destroyed? The problem is there, basically speaking, because people are very greedy. Because they're not being given spiritual education, because they're not giving spiritual knowledge, they think that the goal of life is to satisfy these material senses until we die. But we all know the nature of material enjoyment, that one is never completely satisfied. So therefore, our modern society continues to try to exploit this earth in order to satisfy our senses, to satisfy our greed. But a spiritual person is not greedy. Actually, a spiritual person, because he's satisfied in his relationship with God, he's very happy to take the basic necessities of life. Now, if we actually take the basic necessities of life, we'll find that there's sufficient uh, material facility in this world for everyone. There's, there'll be, there's sufficient water, there's sufficient food, there's sufficient land for every creature on, on this earth. But only because we're greedy, because we don't have spiritual knowledge, we exploit the earth. So, for example, in our Krishna conscious movement, uh, one of our mottos is simple living with high thinking. Now, right now, in modern society, it's more like complicated living with no time to think. <laughs>
Tara, Ushtatara Sutta Sisi Mahad is the Vain Gaisa Skan Kandurachara, AC Bhuktivedanta Samishita Bhubhavadi ki, Bhakti Devi ki, Tulsi Maharani ki, is the Vain Gaisa Skan Divi Kandurachara, Shiva Prabhupada ki, Shishtai Gornataraj ki, Shikri Govardhan ki, all glory to the assembled devotees. All glory to the assembled devotees. All glory is all glory to Guru and Gauranga. A person who doesn't have transcendental knowledge is certainly afraid of death. Uh, one time our spiritual master said only two people are not afraid of death. The fool and the enlightened soul or the pure devotee of God. The fool is not afraid of death because he foolishly thinks there is nothing after death. <laughs> this is a modern philosophy. We also find that people think that at the moment of death everything is finished. So they're not fearing death. Uh, but that is a type of foolishness. Uh, on the other hand, the transcendentalist or the devotee of God, he's not afraid of death because he understands what is death. Now, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna states very nicely, Dehi no sminyata dehe kovanam yovanam jara tatateyanta raspaptir dhirastata nimuyanti that just as the embodied soul passes from the body of a baby to a boy to a youth to an old man, the soul also passes into another body at the moment of death. Now this is called reincarnation. <laughs> Obviously, if you want to love someone, then we have to know who they are. Just to know that there's God is good, but the next step in self-realization is to know who is God, what does he look like, what does he do, etc. Now, this knowledge is actually given in the Vedic scriptures of India, and those who study these scriptures under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master, a representative of God, can actually understand the nature of God and awaken our love for Him. Because this is our relationship with God. He exists. He has a spiritual abode. There is a kingdom of God. And actually that is our original home. Unfortunately, we have left that spiritual world and we have come to this material creation where we are obliged to suffer various miseries of material existence, such as birth, uh, disease, old age and death, but an intelligent person realizes he cannot be happy separate from God, so he takes to a spiritual path in order to awaken that love for the Lord in order to return to the spiritual world. Now we can see that in different times in history, the Lord has come either personally or he has sent his beloved son, such as Lord Jesus Christ, or he may uh, empower a particular person to represent him, such as Muhammad. 
But as I was explaining earlier this evening in the lecture, the purpose is always the same, to enlighten human society to the ultimate goal of life, that we should live our lives in such a way that we can awaken our love for God and return to the kingdom of God, to the spiritual world. Now, each time the Lord comes, he speaks as much as the people of that time can understand. So actually the only difference in the various religions in the world is the depth of knowledge or some of the traditions or the language. But essentially, uh, all bona fide religions, authentic religions, which are given to us by God or His representative, are for this purpose, to awaken this love for God so that we can return to the spiritual world and serve Him uh, eternally. Vigyanavashita, Vigyanavashita, Tava, Sarvam Yetat Babam Veda, Sarvam Yetat Babam Veda, Buddha Bhavya Bhavat Prabhu, Buddha Bhavya Bhavat Prabhu, Karamala Kavadishva, Karamala Kavadishva, Vigyanavashita, Tava, Vigyanavashita, Tava, Sarvam Yetat Babam Veda, Bhavya Bhavat Prabhu, Uta Bhavya Bhavat Prabhu, Karamala Kavadishva, Karamala Kavadishva, Vigyanava Shitam Tava, Vigyanava Shitam Tava, Sarvam Yetad Bhavam Veda, Sarvam Yetad Bhavam Veda, Uta Bhavya Bhavat Prabhu, Uta Bhavya Bhavat Prabhu, Karamala Kavadishva, Karamala Kavadishva, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. as a citizen uh, by following the laws of the government is protected by that government if it's a good government and if the citizen disobeys the laws of the government then he lives in constant fear of being punished by the government so in the same way if we follow the laws of God as they are given in revealed scriptures we need not fear anything because there will be no reaction, no bad reaction for our activities. 
And if we follow the laws of God as they are given in the revealed scriptures in human society, then actually the Lord will oversee us and he will uh, protect us. Uh, right now in our modern society, people are full of fear, basically because they are not actually strictly following the laws of God as they are given in the revealed scriptures. In our Hare Krishna movement, we live without fear because we are very careful to follow all the injunctions in the religious uh, scriptures. For example, in our movement, we follow four principles. Uh, no eating of meat, fish, or eggs. No intoxication, which includes alcohol, narcotics, etc. No sex life outside of marriage, and uh, no gambling. Now, in all the revealed scriptures of the world, these things, to follow these principles is emphasized. Not only in the Vedic scriptures, but in the Bible, and the Quran, Torah, etc. We are encouraged to be saintly persons, because by following these injunctions, um, we can uh, obey the laws of God. For example, meat eating. This is a very interesting subject matter. Actually, uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna explains that there's life within every creature. There's a soul. And if we kill that living entity simply for the pleasure of eating the body of that living entity, that is actually considered a sin. Even in the Bible, it is stated, thou shalt not kill. So we, we actually take this literally. Now, if someone disobeys this law and he maintains himself by eating the flesh of other living entities, then there is what is called karma. In Sanskrit, karma means the law of action and reaction. If we do good, good comes back to us. And if we do bad, a bad reaction will come back to us. So it is considered bad, according to scripture, to kill other living entities for our foodstuffs. Therefore, in the Hare Krishna movement, we are vegetarian. We're not only vegetarian for the reason that it's very healthy, because all of God's laws make sense and they're good for us, but we're also vegetarian because we're sensitive that there is life within all creatures on this, uh, in this world. So we don't live in fear that we're going to get a reaction by disobeying this uh, law of God. And there are many such laws in, in the revealed scriptures. So if one acts properly according to the direction of God, one need not fear anything, just like if one acts properly in accordance with the government, one need not fear the government, but actually the government serves the citizens. So in the same way, God will uh, facilitate human society by giving us so many fruits and grains and vegetables and water and air and everything that we need to accomplish the mission of life, which is God consciousness. We thank you very much for listening to this chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. Pani Panovi, Jevchentai Hopsi, Jikwemi Babzo, Zasukhani, Tay Hare Krishna Mahamantri. This chanting of Hare Krishna is a transcendental song, it is a spiritual song. Tantanovani Hare Krishna is Jvinkovom Vibracom, Duchovom Vibracom. Because it is composed of different names of God. Ponieważ składa się z różnych imion Boga. Actually, God is one, but he has many names. Just like the sun is one, but in different parts of the world, in different languages, we call the sun by different names. So, God is also one, but he has many names.
from the spiritual world and from revealed scriptures like the Bible, for example, in Western countries, or the Quran in the Middle East, or in the Far East, in India, the Bhagavad Gita, uh, we can actually understand what is the nature of God. Now, in all these revealed scriptures, as well as in the teachings of all great saintly persons, we understand that in the ultimate issue, God is a person. God is the source of everything, both within and without our experience. So within our experience, we see there are persons. So that means that God must also be a person, because everything has come from God. And the Vedic literatures explain, not only is there God, but uh, explains the personality of Godhead in uh, Western uh, countries, we know that there is God. We accept this from the teachings of Jesus Christ in the Bible. But in the Vedic scriptures of India, we can go deeper into the subject matter. The Bhagavad Gita is actually the postgraduate study of the science of God because it was spoken directly by the Lord himself when he was present on this planet 5,000 uh, years ago. And there, the personality of Godhead is revealed as Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Just like here in Western countries, uh, we know that there's a president in each country. But some people are not satisfied just to know there's a president. They want to know who is the president. So this is the beauty of the Vedic culture, that 
not only do they know that there is a God, but they know the personality of Godhead, uh, Lord Sri Krishna. Uh, God's form, God's uh, activities, God's associates, the abode of God, are all very nicely revealed and described in detail in the Vedic scriptures. And by hearing this uh, knowledge, we can actually awaken our love for the Lord. Um, obviously, if we want to love someone, then we have to know who they are. Oh, 